Hey everybody, Danny Rod here. Thanks for joining us. I've just come off a lesson with a really good friend of mine, Richard, who's got a golf tournament in just a few hours time. He said, Danny, can I just pop down and have a quick look because my drive is going everywhere. And I said, yeah, yeah, come down. I've got 15, 20 minutes, love it. We'll have a quick look. Now, Richard was falling into two of the biggest mistakes I see when people try and hit their driver straight. And I thought, look, if he's doing it, and he's pretty, you know, he's pretty good, there's probably a lot of people out there who could benefit from this. So I thought I'd share it with you. Now, before I do though, if you're new to the channel, this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Now, with Richard, by the time we finished the session, he was hitting it so much straighter and so much longer. Why? Well, we eliminated the misconceptions with drivers. So, Here's what Richard thought he was trying to do. So he was slicing his driver. Slicing his driver, he was a big booming slice, right hand, a big booming slice. The club path was swinging to the left of the target. His face is open to that path, and he was literally creating these big booming slices. He was trying to correct that by, understandably, he wanted to, the face was wide open, he tried to close the face. He tried to close the face on the way through. The problem is, how he was doing it was costing him loads of yards and he was actually, he wasn't really working. He wasn't getting any straighter whatsoever. So what was he doing? Well, this is what he was doing. So his face is open. This is, an, you know, for a slice. He's literally coming across the line of the golf ball with his open face. So he's trying therefore to do this. Stop that by closing the face. But here's what that does. First of all, if you're rolling the face and trying to close it, how do you time that? That's so inconsistent, isn't it? How do you time that? It's very, very inconsistent. The other thing is when you start to roll, you also create very flicky and weak motions. What I mean by look at my hands and look at this position. It's actually very weak. So what's strong and then what's consistent with the head? Well, if you want to get into a strong position, this is strong. Look where the wrists are. Strong framework, good structure. That's a great structure for a drive. Bang, it's strong. The next thing is this. Well, if your face is open, how do you change it? Well, the change doesn't come from rolling, rolling the forearms. It comes from a very subtle change in the wrists here. Okay, so let me explain. Let's start with the strength first. Strength is this, structure. The hands gonna, your hands are gonna feel like they're ahead of the face. They won't be when you hit, uh, hit driver complete, but they'll be strong, they're in strong. The other thing here is this, my trail elbow here, here is, is rotated underneath, okay, in a clockwise direction, underneath. This is a strong framework position. What Richard was getting in uh, impact when he was trying to release the club is, these arms, he was turning the club face with a shoulder coming this way, getting a very weak impact position and an unstable, inconsistent club face. What he needed to do was get this elbow, stay in this position here, so strong, but if he wanted to close the face, he needs to feel the face being closed with the top part of the arms here, not the upper part of the arms here. You try and close the face here, what you end up doing is you throw away the angles, make an inconsistent shot, and shots that are powerful. So we keep the angles and rotate the face with the top part of our wrists here, not the top part of our torso. So he's like, wow, I didn't, I didn't think about that. And he said, and I'm like, really? He's an ex-tennis player. I said, you didn't think of that? Watch this. You're a tennis player, and I said, you gave me a tennis lesson. And I was making the same mistake that you were making when I was trying to put topspin on. I was doing this, I was rolling my racket here, and I was trying to put topspin on by rolling. And I wasn't getting any power or control. You then said to me, fix the racket down so it faces the ground, and then simply brush up the back of the ball. We have a fixed racket, and then structure. So you have consistency of club face, and strength in your body. So you have consistency, strength and consistency because the face isn't moving around. So imagine this. Imagine if you can keep that club face fairly fixed throughout the swing and all you then do is try to feel the right structure. 
So that's how we started with Richard. I want you to do the same. So the first thing we're going to do is, and you can buy this, you can do this, get a feel for it with a tennis racket. And so let's put it, in fact, let's do this, put it down. So there's the tennis racket here, okay? What I'm going to do is, is watch, Richard's rolling and rolling, way too consistent. What I want him to do is I want this racket to stay fixed. I want him to simply come back, and there's no roll of the racket here. Everything is working more together, no roll. As I come back down, there's still no roll. So the club face now is more likely to come in straight and square. All we then have to do is work on how we feel, we develop that feel for a powerful strike. Because Richard had been feeling that he's always, that's how you get power. He now needed to feel this motion through impact, which is obviously going to be different. So get a tennis racket or something just to kind of have a nice visual tool. And then what I want you to do is we'll start off just simply working on the takeaway. So we'll get ourselves set. We're going to work on working this away there where there's literally no roll of the wrist whatsoever. A good feeling here is when you get to about here, the right hand or my bottom hand is on top of the club and my um, the lower hand or top hand here is almost the back of it is facing the ground. Notice this. There's no wrist going on here. I'm not trying to face, do this with a wrist. It's a simple work away of the body. My, my bicep, left bicep here is on my chest and I'm working it away with no roll and I keep working it back. There's absolutely no roll on that club and you may just want to hit golf balls simply like that initially. Now I've got more detailed um, information on, on the exact takeaway. If you feel like, mm, I'm not too sure about that, in this top right hand corner, it's a great video. Go and maybe watch that later. Um, but for now, all we're going to do is just work this away, not altering the face position whatsoever as stage number one. And I'm just going to hit no, no big shots, just simple motion. Look after the face and it will look after you. Now what we should, should, should see a little bit is a little draw. There you go. A little draw. Just tap it down the fairway, backwards and forwards. That's all I'm working on. I'm, the sensation that Richard had was that... He wasn't, it was almost the face stayed closed. Because he was so used to opening, it felt very close, and you might feel that too. So we just hit shots, sensing that that club face, there's no roll, it stays, almost feeling, I'm exaggerating, watch this, it feels closed all the way through the backswing, all the way through the downswing. Again, no big shots, just keep it there, swing back, all the way through, no roll at the end either, back, through, and we should start to see a lovely little Curve, there you go, 200 yards down the fairway, absolutely fine. Now, that's the club face, but again, there's still power there yet because you're just getting a feel for the club face control. The second stage now is then delivering. Now, you've got a feel for that the no roll. Now, you've got, so you've got, you've basically got this bit, right? But now, you've got to get feeling this bit here. And that can come from all, it's all different for us. So, the first thing is just to sense what I got with Richard because even though I, he, I was talking to him about this, he couldn't resist this, this. There's the ball, I need to release the club. No, the release happens, yeah, but this straightening, although where we get a straight line happens after the ball, it actually doesn't happen at the ball. We crush it, and then the straight line here between the lead arm and the club happens after. It's like a boxer, imagine this. We don't get the maximum power at the extension here of the, uh, of the club. We get the, the power goes through. So imagine this, that's the person in front. We're going to box. The, we go through there. This is the weak bit if it's straight. We want to have flex here to drive. And that's the key aspect here. We got strength. You got to get that sensation and the straightening happens afterwards. So he needed to feel this. The trail elbow here is under, and we're driving through. So we've got the control of the club face. Let's, let me just add a little bit more power into this one. So we're getting a sensation, holding that. In fact, you know what? No, let's just imagine this. I'm going to teach you, I would be uh, teaching this. We st start small first, just get that sensation. Watch this in action. I'm looking after the club face, and I'm almost curtailing that fall through, keeping this underneath here. It's a little bit further look. Look at the club path here. 9.7 on that club path. Um, so very much into out, completely the opposite to coming over the top. This is what's going to happen when you start to try to get that pressure. And look at the curve. You're now starting to see much, much more of a draw style shape. 
because you're coming in. So you just exaggerate that, develop that feel. In fact, keeping it short is probably a better idea because the urge to swing all the way through will probably give you too much encouragement to release the club into this full finish. Sometimes it might be worth just looking after the club face, feeling that motion there, and then going. We start small with Richard, and then gradually we start to build up the power. So we're looking after that club face, we're feeling that in the here, and we're holding the angle a little bit longer, and there we go. Let's have a look at this again in action. Back. A little bit harder, so probably about 240, 250 that one. No, 270. So again, big into outswing path, exaggerating this motion, getting into there. And that's all we did. 15, 20 minutes, so much different. Changing club path completely. So in summary, what is the biggest mistake I see people make with their driver when they're trying to hit straight? Very simply, they are trying to release the club here rather than keeping this strength on. They are often trying to close the face by rolling the club face here. No, we want to, ultimately, the, the, the position of the club face needs to be pretty fixed. And if, and if your foot face is open, then we stop the roll and we try to fix it. Remember the tennis racket here. Tennis racket, we don't roll, it's too, it's too weak. The face is fixed, we've got strength. The face is fixed down, it's the, it's the action or the body action through the shot that provides the spin. No different to golf. What we're doing here, strength impact. Trail elbow bending in. Turn the face with the lead wrist here. Fix it, bang. Fix it, bang. Stable, consistent. That is all we did with Richard. I really hope it works for you too, particularly if you're slicing it. Now, if you're drawing the ball or hooking the ball, it's exactly the same thing. You might have the face that's too closed. So just get a sense of where it needs to be. Fix it and then away you go. So I hope you enjoyed this training. If you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends who could do with some help with their driver. Remember, there's a free practice plan in the description box below. So go and download it, it's completely free. And of course, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first videos of mine, consider subscribing by pressing that bell button. And until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.